Seven. Stay tuned now and test your recall along with high school students on the Interscholastic Quiz Program, Answers, Please. Today's contest brings together Fort Plain High School and Heatley High School. Good morning. Welcome to Answers, Please. I'm John Wagner, your host. And once again, we have two fine high school teams ready to compete this morning for cash prizes. And more importantly, one of these two new teams will return next week as our new defending champion. Having just completed our spring vacation, we welcome you to Answers, Please, and wish you, of course, a wonderful weekend. And we have, as I said, two high school teams looking forward to their first win this morning here on Answers, Please. Let's meet them both right now, starting with a team coming from Fort Plain High. Hi, I'm Stacy Veach. I'm a senior, and I'm the captain. Jeff Green, junior. Kathy Frederick, junior. Tina Silver, sophomore. We welcome Fort Plain High to Answers, Please. Wish them good luck here in their first appearance. And also appearing for the first time this morning, I answer please. Let's welcome the team from Heatley High. Hi, I'm Kevin Robert, Captain. Julie Guppo, Junior. Russ Sterling, Junior. Joey Nord, Junior. We welcome Heatley High School to Answers, Please. Wish them good luck as well. Our judge this morning is the sole authority of answers here on Answers, Please, and her decisions will be final. Before we begin the contest, let's listen to the rules. There are two types of questions. Buzzer questions worth five points each and four-part team questions worth a possible 20 points total. In the second half of play, all point values are doubled. Each round of the game proceeds as follows. Buzzer questions are offered to both teams. The first team to correctly answer three buzzer questions earns the right to a four-part team question. The winning school will receive $50, the runner-up $25. Should a school win three consecutive games, they will be retired as undefeated champions and awarded a handsome trophy provided by the College of St. Rose. Now, answers please. I want to remind everyone here that uh, we are looking forward to the playoffs, which are going to be in June here on Answers, Please. The top uh, four schools who are undefeated in three appearances, and the totals of their appearances in three times here on the show, we'll get them into the playoffs. We look forward to that in June. Of course, we're looking forward to either one of these teams being a part of that. So good luck, Heatley, and good luck to Fort Plain. We start with a buzzer question with five points. Hands on the buzzers. It has been noted that when we sleep and dream that REMS, R-E-M-S, can be observed. What are REMS? Quick Buzz by Kathy Frederick. First rapid point. eye movement. That is right. She said quickly, rapid eye movements, and that is the correct <laughs> definition for REM. Starts us off with a five points. Let's keep it rolling for five new points. We associate the theory of inherited acquired characteristics with a French zoologist. He held that a giraffe acquired the genetic specification for a long neck through generations of browsing on the upper foliage of trees. What was this zoologist's name? Mark Sterling Heatley. That is exactly right. Yes, Lamarck was a zoologist and five points earned by Heatley to tie it up. The dromedary camel has only one hump, and the Bactrian camel has two. In what part of the world does the two-humped camel live? What part of the world? We have an idea from Mark Sterling Heatley. Northern Africa? No, it's not Northern Africa. Need a location in the world. Anyone from Fort Plain? All right, seeing no ideas, we'll give the exact, exact location. Actually, it's Central Asia. Central Asia for the Bactrian camel. Let's go on for a five-pointer. Both Nero and Henry VIII were relatively good rulers at first, but added some bloodstains to their histories by killing a philosopher. Nero compelled Seneca to commit suicide. What philosopher did Henry VIII have beheaded? A philosopher that was beheaded by Henry VIII. All right, we don't see a buzz for that. Aunt Thomas More, our answer for five points, okay? Utopia, okay, was the subject of the play we're looking for. Still tied in buzzer questions, one apiece. For five points, it is defined as a body of permeable material that contains and conducts enough groundwater to yield significant amounts to wells and springs. It is a Latin word, meaning water bearing. What newsworthy word is this? One word. And seeing no definition, the one word for five points would have been aquifer. Aquifer. Let's try another one. Listen carefully. Another single word answer. What short word, beginning with the letter K, derived from the Greek word for glory, means praise or credit for achievement? Keen Silver, Fort Plain. That is right. Kudos. K-U-D-O-S. <laughs> Waiting for the one answer that they know correctly here and coming up with the five points. Fort Plain is up by one buzzer question. Most of us have seen a rainbow. When we observed that beautiful phenomenon, where were we in relation to the sun? In 
relation to the sun, where were we when we see a rainbow? We have Mark Sterling. 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle is not what we're looking for, no. Anyone from Fort Plain have a idea? All right, well, we're talking about the position you are in in concerning the sun, and that would be your back would be toward the sun, all right? And those full rainbows are best observed at sunrise or sunset with your back to the sun at that time. For five points, let's try another one. What name is given to any grouping of words containing at least one subject and a predicate, but not written with a capital letter? Mark Sterling, Heatley. Phrase? No, it's not a phrase. Good try. Fort Plain, have an idea? Yes, Kathy. Clause? Clause is what we're looking for, right. Clause, a grouping of words, at least one subject and one predicate. And that earns Fort Plain, the team question, the first one of this morning's contest. Quotation. Quotation. Let me explain that. You're going to have 40 seconds to earn 20 points, all right? All these quotations are well known, hopefully to each one of you. All you have to do is identify who said each one and make it sound easy. So we're looking for a person from the quotation, starting with Stacy. I would rather be right than president. Pass. Said that. All right, she passed. Jeff, all men are great in their dreams. All right, Jeff passes. Let's try Kathy. There's a sucker born every minute. Pass. All right, we're going to go down the key and see if we can get this one. Give me a lever long enough and I can single-handed move the world. Archimedes? That's right, yes, Archimedes. Very good. He did it for them for one out of four in the team question. Henry Clay says, I would rather be right than president. All men are great in their dreams with Sigmund Freud and P.T. Barnum. There's a sucker born every minute. For five points, both teams back in the buzzer questions. He was a famous Indian chief, and we recognize Geronimo as such. To what tribe did Geronimo belong? A tribe of Indians. We have Dean Phil for Fort Plain. The Sioux? It's not the Sioux tribe. We need an Indian tribe, Heatley. Do you have any ideas? Mark. Uh, Apache? Apache's a good idea. Apache is right for five points. That takes us to another buzzer question. Let's see if we keep those five pointers coming now as we move along. The give and take principle in politics by which one party will further the interest of another in return for help in casting their own measures is called what? Jolene Root. Heatley. Pork barreling? Pardon me? Pork barreling? No, it's not pork barreling. Fort Plain, do you have a term for that? The give and take principle. Yes, Stacy. Gerrymandering? No, not gerrymandering. And I think you're getting both terms there coming up almost close to log rolling, which is the term we need, all right? From the early custom of uh, actually helping a new settler clear the logs, it's a way that they now, of course, are a principle in politics where you further the interests of a, a group. For five points, stones do it. Stones do it. Reluctant students do it. Happy children do it. Sloppy, hasty readers do it. What do they all do? Team Phil for Fort Plain. Skip. Oh, you've got it, yes. Skip. All right. Stone skip. Student skip. Reluctant. Happy children skip. And uh, hasty readers may do that. One apiece and buzzer questions. Let's go on to see who earns the next three. A true, a true but seemingly contradictory statement is defined by one word. What is the word which describes such a sentence as Team Phil for Fort Plain? Paradox. That's the word. I was going to explain more, but that was the word for five points. All right, saying something like, when the bases are loaded, a walk is a run, is an example. A tree must be cut down before it is cut up. Those are paradoxes. Let's go on to five-point buzzer questions. Certain alloys are called amalgams. What element is present in all amalgams? Yes, Kevin. Aluminum? No, it's not aluminum. Any ideas, Fort Plain? Yes, Keen. Iron? It's not iron. We're looking for mercury. Mercury, all right? Present in all amalgams. We're still right at two to one with Fort Plain up by a buzzer question. For five points, what is the name of the giant water reed which the Egyptians used to make the material on which interrupted by Keen Phil for Fort Plain? Papyrus. That's right. They made paper from papyrus, all right? Used for writing, papyrus. And we go to a team question, the second one of the contest, going to Fort Plain. It's on mythology. Nice one's quotations. Let's try mythology. I don't know if they're getting easier, but good luck to each one of you. 50 seconds of time limit, 20 points are possible. All the answers are found in Greek and Roman mythology and hopefully in your head. Please identify the characters I described. Starting with Stacy. This Roman goddess, Roman goddess of wisdom, was supposed to have sprung fully armed from the forehead of Jupiter. Who was she? Athena. No, it was not Athena. Let's try the next one, Jeff. This character is best known for the punishment he received. He was doomed to roll a huge stone up a hill only to have it roll back. Who was she? Pass. All right, we'll go to the next one, Kathy. 
This character in Roman mythology was the wife of Jupiter, the king of the gods. Who was she? Pass. All right, we're down to king. Try this one. Jupiter was the Roman king of the gods. Who was the Greek mythological king of the gods? Zeus. Mm. That's right, Zeus. Once again, we go down to Keen. He earns the five points on the team question. Minerva is our first answer. Lucy Fisk is our second. Juno was our third answer on the mythology question. And quickly, the first half has ended here at Answers, please. Let's check the score. We've got a close one. Fort Plain, 40. Heatley, 10. Now, point values in the second half double for all the answers. And, of course, you see a change in the score dramatically. So, although you may think that's a very small right now or a lower score, it will make a difference in the second half which teams get those buzzers and team questions. What I'd like to do is go back to each one of the teams because they're on for the first time this week. We'd like to talk to each one of them briefly and go over quickly to Stacy Veach from Fort Plain. You're the captain. You're a senior over at uh, Fort Plain. And yes. we want to welcome you and Jeff, captain, team. And I know that Stacy has something prepared for us to, uh, to look at while you do the narration. So why don't you go ahead with that right now. Nestled in the heart of the Mohawk Valley, the Fort Plain Central School stands as a paragon of knowledge and academic excellence. With the recent inclusion of our AP History, English, and Computer Science programs, our curriculum is reaching new heights. Aside from the academic side of our school life, our dramatics club is known statewide for its excellent production. This year, our rendition of Man of La Mancha received wide acclaim. Our Yorker Club has kept up its reputation of dedication to public service, as illustrated by our annual Yorker Bikeathon, which raises money for the Fort Plain Museum. Fort Plain's chapter of the National Honor Society has also sponsored many social programs, like our yearly caroling trips to local adult homes. Our Computer Association, CAF, caters to the students whose interests lie in the field of computer science, and the recent addition of our new IBM lab simply thrilled them to pieces. All in all, the school experience at Fort Plain, due in part to the diligent dedication of the staff, is one that parents should be proud to send their children to for eons to come. Very good. Thank you very much, Stacy. Fort Plain, of course, we wish you good luck in the second half. You have 40 points, and we're proud to have you here. And now over to Heatley High, the captain is Kevin Roberts, who you've seen uh, previously in the first half. We have Julie, Mark, and Jolene. I want to welcome each one of you. I'd like to just ask you, uh, Kevin, to, to mention a few things maybe you've been involved with at Heatley High over there. I know you're the captain here, so that's one thing they've got you doing. Uh, can you tell me other events or other activities or clubs that you're involved with? I'm a member of Key Club. At our district convention this year, we won the bronze division very for good. achievement. Great. Okay, how did you get selected as captain for Heatley? <laughs> Were you nominated or... Luck. Luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we wish you then in the second half, okay, is uh, more good luck. And Julie, what are you involved with over there at Heatley High? Some things that maybe you've been doing in the last uh, year or two? Sports, key club, lots of clubs, okay. uh, prom coming up. Okay, okay, very good. Well, good to have you here. Mark Sterling. I'm um, also a member of the key club and involved in sports. Okay, we've got three of the key, key club members right here. And Jolene? I'm also a member of the key club. <laughs> <laughs> that must be how we came with the team, huh? Okay, well, it's good to have all of you here. And, of course, we wish the Heatley High good luck. Ten points right now. I'm sure that's going to go up in the second half, which we want you to be back for right after this brief timeout. The Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. Featuring the Shanghai Acrobatic Troupe from the People's Republic of China is coming to the Glens Falls Civic Center May 19th through the 24th. Opening night, Tuesday, May 19th, is Price Chopper and WRGB Family Night. Get coupons worth $2.50 off the price of admission at all Price Chopper stores for the May 19th performance of the greatest show on earth. Coolio. Live on Mother's Day. Sunday night, May 10th in the Glen Falls Civic Center. WRGB TV6 and WGYAM Radio welcome Julio Iglesias. Reserve seat tickets now at the Civic Center box office. Usual outlets are charged by phone. Sunday, May 10th, spend a romantic Mother's Day with Julio Iglesias. This is the point where I want to remind everyone here in the studio and at home that Answers, Please, is a game of quick recall. It is not intended to reflect the educational programs of either one of the high schools appearing on our show this morning. So please remember that Answers, Please, is only a game. The second half of that game is about to begin. The next time we hear that bell, it'll be the end of the second half, and we'll announce the winner. It's 40 to 10, Fort Plain up by 30, and of course we're looking for a new defending champion. Point values double in the second half for all answers, and so we're looking forward to a change in that score dramatically by either team. And we'd like to go over to Fort Plain High's Captain Stacy Veach and have her announce and introduce to us the faculty advisors and student officers. 
Stacy. Our faculty advisor is Mr. Ed Pangburn, and our alternates are Pete Toscano and Amy Walter. We thank them very much for their efforts in preparing students for Answers, Please Teams. And Kevin Robert, over to you, please. Our faculty advisors are Mr. Jerome Steele, Mr. Charles Kudrick, Dan Coca, and Ms. Michelle May. Our alternates are Steven Swinton and Nicole DeFabio. All right. We thank them all as well for their preparation of students for our program. We're very proud to have both these schools on this, this morning, and we wish them good luck in the second half. And next time we hear the bell, as I mentioned, will be the end of the contest. Good luck. Hands on the buzzers. We have no buzzers earned by either teams in the first half, so we look for three. Let's go for a team question. For ten points now, buzzer question. What is the name for the process for estimating characteristics of a population by analysis of a selected sample? The single word name of the process for estimating characteristics of a population by analysis of a selected sample. All right, seeing no buzzers quickly, let's give the answer survey. Survey would have been the 10 point answer. Let's go on. For 10 points, what is the name of the line of latitude north of the equator, which runs north of Cuba, bisects Mexico, and is north of Hawaii? A line of latitude. And we have Jeff Green, Fort Plain. Tropic of Cancer. That's exactly correct, yes. Tropic of Cancer earns the 10 points. Let's keep moving along, get those buzzers hot. The Romans built them all over Europe, and they served a most useful purpose. What do aqueducts do? Kevin Seifer, Stouffer, I'm sorry, Fort Plain. Uh, they serve as a water system? Yes, they do. They carry water over land and over uh, other water. Okay, both things. An aquifer. Let's go on for 10 points. President Andrew Jackson's home and a famous museum in Leningrad, USSR, have the same name. What is it? Andrew Jackson's home and a famous museum in Leningrad. Same name. Okay, seeing no attempts at that, the Hermitage, the Hermitage, and that home for Jackson is in Nashville, or near Nashville, Tennessee. For 10 points, this inventor painted a portrait of Lafayette, which hangs in the New York City Hall. 12 years later, he invented the telegraph. Who was he? Jeff Green, Fort Plain. Samuel Morris. That is right, Samuel F.B. Morris. <laughs> known well for the telegraph, and not so well known for the portrait. Team question, worth 40 points. Spelling is the topic. Spelling is the topic, and you can use pencil and paper. Remember, you have 30 seconds, though, 30 seconds, so don't take too long with your figuring. It is not always easy to remember which words are spelled with the I-B-L-E or the A-B-L-E ending. Please spell these words clearly and correctly with the correct ending. Starting 30 seconds, and with Stacy. Convertible. C-O-N-V-E-R-T-I-B-L-E. That is right, yes. Yes? Vulnerable. C-U-L-N-E-R-A-B-L-E. That is correct, yes. Kathy, inseparable. My name is S-E-P-E-R-A-B-L-E. No, that's incorrect. Let's try the last one. Team, admissible. Okay, we did run out of time because we only had 30 seconds there. Admissible ends with an I-B-L-E. Actually, uh, Kathy, you did have the correct ending, but we missed the A. It was I-N-S-E-P-A-R-A-B-L-E, and she said E. Okay, so we go back. We had two out of four on a team question. Back to buzzer questions for 10 points. Which of the United States, bordering on an ocean, has the shortest coastline? Which of the United States is the shortest? Kevin Roberts. Connecticut. No, it's not Connecticut. It's neither state. Team? Rhode Island. No, you're close. But farther north, New Hampshire. New Hampshire has the shortest coastline. All right. For 10 points, what was so important about the Supreme Court decision, Marbury versus Madison, made in 1803? Kathy Frederick, Fort Plain. Established judicial review. Established judicial review. Can we accept that as an answer? No, we need uh, a different answer for the 10 points. Pete Lee, can you give us that answer? Marbury versus Madison, 1803. All right, seeing no attempts, it's the first occasion where actually the Supreme Court held an act of Congress unconstitutional. All right, an unconstitutional act of Congress. Okay, for 10 points, we tend to divide the United States into sections characterized by local weather. However, there is one kind of storm which is common to all 50 states. What sort of storm is this common to all states? Jolene Root, Heatley. Thunderstorm? Yes, thunder, lightning, or electrical storm. Any one of those would give the uh, correct answer. And the average is about 40 per year of those storms. For 10 points, a nine-mile strait divides Sardinia from this French island in the Mediterranean. What is the name of this French island? Quick buzz, Team Stouffer. Corsica? That is right. Corsica is the correct answer for the 10 points. <laughs> Birthplace of Napoleon. 
course, they're going to earn 10 points, tying us in buzzer questions one apiece. When the baseball umpire calls for the batter, how long does he have to get into the batter's box? We'll see the batter up within how long? Mark Sterling. Uh, two minutes. No, it's not two minutes. You need a time limit. Fort Plain. Stacy? 30 seconds. No, you gave him too little time. You gave him too much. One minute would have split the difference and made it correct. One minute to get up to the batter's box and in position. Still tied at buzzer questions. One apiece. For 10 points, what country sold the United States land with the Gadsden Purchase? <laughs> Jeff Green, Fort Plain. Mexico. That is right. Mexico in 1853. <laughs> Purchase for 10 million. For 10 points, a yak, Y-A-K is an animal, a yam, Y-A-M is a potato. What is a yeti, Y-E-T-I? <laughs> Quick buzz, Keen Silver, Fort Plain. A uh, mythical beast. A mythical beast we can accept. A mythical beast for yeti. No, we can accept that. Beatley, Mark. Bigfoot. We accept Beep, Bigfoot. Okay, a Bigfoot or Abominable Snowman. All right, Bigfoot is the specific one that we need. Another name for Abominable Snowman is Yeti, Y-E-T-I. That ties us. Those are questions, two apiece. For 10 points, listen carefully. If I described an organism as phototropic, what biological characteristic am I describing about that organism? It's phototropic. Jolene Root. Can make its own food. No, she said it can make its own food. We're looking for another characteristic, Keen. Photosynthesis? No, you're looking toward the food making process. We want to know if it's phototropic, that it has a tendency to grow toward light, all right? Toward the light or away from the light, usually toward the light, phototropic. For 10 points, listen carefully, still tied in buzzer questions. Since its beginning in 1945, the United Nations has had five official languages, Chinese, French, English, Russian, and Spanish. Recently, at a considerable expense, another language has been added as official. We associate this language with the Middle East negotiations. What is that new language? Mark Sterling. Arabic. That is it. Arabic. Yes. Correct answer. That earns a team question going to Heatley. All right. It's our fourth one of the contest, and it's going over to Heatley High. 50 seconds, your time limit, and 40 points are possible. Famous people is the topic. Sometimes words and objects are named for famous people. I will describe the object. Please give me the name of the person for whom it was named. All right. Listen carefully, starting with Kevin. A knife named for an American scout and soldier. Bowie. That's right. Bowie is right. Julie, a word meaning to combine against, to refuse to purchase, named for a land agent in County Mayo, Ireland. <laughs> Pass. All right. She passes. Mark, a kind of hand grenade or small bomb named for a Russian diplomat. Pass. All right, she passes quickly. And Jolene, a kind of hairstyle named for an American Civil War general. Um. American Civil War general. and that 50 seconds runs out. Seems like a long time to try and uh, come up with the answer. Sideburns or burn size from burn size is the person's name, the general. Molotov is the name we needed for the hand grenade boycott to combine against to refuse to purchase. All right, let's go back to buzzer questions. Both teams, 10 points. Although we usually associate windmills with the Netherlands, windmills do supply water for the Mancha section of what country? Windmills supply water for the Mancha section of what country? We've got Julie Guthrie. Italy? No, it's not Italy. Need a country. Fort Plain, quickly. <laughs> All right, seeing no ideas for a country, we'll give the answer Spain, which would be a correct answer. Remember Man of La Mancha? All right. Don Quixote with the windmills there. For 10 points, this president had several firsts in his career. He was the first U.S. president who had been born in the U.S. All the previous had been British subjects before him. Since he was born in Kinderhook, he was the first of four U.S. presidents who were born in the Interrupted by Mark Sterling, Heatley. Martin Van Buren. That's right, Martin Van Buren. Born in New York State, Kinderhook, 1737. That was the man with the first, and let's go on for 10 points. Who's first for this? Most of Q words are spelled with a U following the Q. However, one airline dispenses with the U. Where is Qantas, Q-A-N-T-A-S? Kevin Robert, Heatley. Australia. That's right, it's based in Australia, Qantas Airlines, based in Australia. 
That is correct, and we go on quickly, looking for the next team to earn a team question. For 10 points, the Uncle Sam Atrium, located in Troy, New York, is a shopping center. Architecturally, what is an atrium? A-T-R-I-U-M. Stacy Veach. Is the entrance way? An entrance hall? Okay, a hall or entrance or an open courtway. All right, in zoology, it's part of the heart, but it leads into an opening, and so we're looking for an opening or hall. Would be correct. Specifically looking for the word hall, and she said an entranceway or hall. For 10 points, again, both, both teams ready. You may remember his name from his unstable nose. His name in Italian means pine seed. What do we call him? That truly got broke. Pinocchio? Yes, Pinocchio is right. Are you were afraid to say it, and there was a right answer. Pinocchio earns Heatley a team question. However, we won't be giving that team question because the second half of Answers, Please, has ended. And we have Fort Plain 120, Heatley 80. Our judges are going to confirm that score. We'll announce the winner right after this. To thousands of us, it's home. To millions more, it's a center of power. Decisions and deals made here affect our lives every day. What's really going on in Albany? And what does it mean to us? One station tells you. The one station with a news bureau in the center of the action. And news experience no one else can match. The Capitol Bureau, only on News Center 6. I'm Bill Duffy, live at the Capitol. Experience Cap the difference. This week, watch Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom for part two of the Laps of Norway. Through severe storms and extreme hardships, four lap families herd thousands of reindeer northward to the islands off the shores of the Barents Sea. This is one of the most unusual shows yet filmed, and you'll see it this week on World of the Laps, Part 2. The Rare and Exotic on Wild Kingdom, Saturday at 1 p.m. on TV6. We have our judge up here to confirm the score and announce our winner. So, Mary, go right ahead. Okay, John. We have a correction in our question concerning the Supreme Court in Marbury versus Madison in 1803, and we're adding 10 points to the score, Fort Plain, making it 130, Fort Plain, Heatley, 80. All right, very good. And, of course, we had a good contest in the second half where all those points started piling up, and uh, actually, Heatley High had earned a team question at the end which unfortunately we ran out of time for, but we thank you very much for appearing here on Answers, Please. Good to have you. We've had teams before from Heatley, and very happy to have them all the time. Uh, we send you on your way with $25, and again, our thanks. And our new defending champion, looking for a second win now next week here on Answers, Please. They're going to come back from Fort Plain. We congratulate them, send them $50, and we'll see you next week. You also, right here on TV6 and Answers, Please.